In this video segment for the Grandview Build House for Homes project, I'm going to be going through the roof framing. I'm going to take a look at first using the automatic roof framing that will stick frame the house. I'll then take a look at using a truss tool to truss frame. And then I'm going to use a combination of stick framing for the dormers and then the truss framing from the rest of the house. I'm going to take a look at how to produce the construction details you need for your construction documents and then if you want to export your model for your subcontractors you can use the 3D viewer to export that model. Let's begin the video by taking a look at the completed model. Sometimes it's easier to isolate the layer set just for the roof framing. I have a layer set just for that and once I isolate it you can get a better look at it. Maybe I'll turn on the wireframe view here and you can see the combination of the trusses and then the stick framing for the dormers and this is the process I'm going to go through in the video. Further, you can see in the construction drawings, I've combined the truss framing and roof framing in the lower right hand corner with the 3D view and then finally the roof plan view in the upper left corner of the screen and then a detail for the energy heel truss that's going to be used. Many of you that are building homes probably farm out your jobs to the truss company and this is an example of the truss design we got back from the truss company that's one of the candidates to design the trusses for the Grandview house. I've used this information to input it into Chief Architect and replicate their trusses. Typically I wouldn't spend the time to put the trusses in unless I just needed a section detail through a portion of the house. But I'm going to show you how to draw some of these trusses in case you want to do a section detail. But typically I wouldn't necessarily invest the time in drawing those trusses. I would just use a stick framing tool if you need to show a 3D of it. If you have been following the project along in the video series, we have created the framing for the foundation floor, the second floor platform, and then the walls. To create the framing for the roof, the easiest way to do that is from the build framing menu to select the roof panel and then just choose to automatically have the roof built. When you do this, the framing will generate automatically based on the roof pitches that you have in the envelope you have. And as you rotate around, program does a very good job of generating it and if you just need to show a 3D representation of the framed roof this is a very easy way to do that. Now I'm going to undo it and I'm going to show you how to use the truss tool and we're going to build a portion of the trusses. I'm going to go into the plan and I'm actually going to delete some of these attic walls you can see over the gables in these areas and we'll use the truss tool and create an end truss and then truss back into the house. I'm going to start by truss framing the right hand side of the house. You can see in 3D what's going to happen. I'm going to do the truss layout in 2D. Using the truss tool, I'm going to come in right over the top of this wall and draw, draw out the first truss. These trusses are designed to be at 24 inches on center. While that truss is selected, I'm going to choose the multiple copy tool and trusses by default have a value of 24 inches loaded into the multiple copy interval and I'm just going to create a couple of copies of that truss back in here. Now for the truss that's at the very end of the wall that would be considered an end truss. All the trusses you can modify if I open up the details about that I can specify that that is an end truss right in here. The next truss I'm going to draw will be right over the top of this wall in the front and I'm going to create a couple of copies of that truss and pull it back. For the front truss, I'm going to go ahead and set that to also be an end truss. The way the truss company laid out the trusses is a little bit different in this area. You'll notice where my cursor is. They put a truss in here and it abuts into this truss. Let's see if we can repeat that process in the design. With the truss tool, let's go ahead and draw our truss right through this area. And then there's another truss right adjacent to that. Let's go ahead and snap that into place. And then there are a series of smaller trusses that snap right into this area. And to make that easy, I'm going to go ahead and use the multiple copy again. It has a 24 inch value loaded into here. I'm just going to pull those back right into this area right here. Next, I'll select the truss above it. Again, use the multiple copy tool. And then we'll copy that truss in here every 24 inches as well. Now adjacent to the dormer, there's a series of three trusses in here. Let's go ahead and draw the first one. And rather than placing two more, I find it easier just to use the multiple copy. And I'm going to go ahead and change the trusses to copy at 1.5 inches. That way it's easy to create three trusses right in here. 
Now while those trusses are still selected, let's slide over here in both of the views. I'm going to create a set of copies of those trusses right on the other side of the dormer. Down in the edit menu, we'll use the copy, reflect around the dormer, find the dormer center. And the nice thing about the trusses is they're actually intelligent and will fit with inside of that envelope. For the next truss, let's come in here. We'll draw one more truss right through this area. I went ahead and reset my multiple copy back to every 24 inches. And we'll go ahead and copy a series of trusses in between. Now this portion of the roof is going to be stick framed and it's for the dormer. If you use the truss tool and you try to draw a truss through the middle of this area and stop right in here, it's actually not possible to have it stop right at the dormer. The truss wants to grow to a bearing wall. And what I have to do is actually draw a truss, a girder truss, that will be perpendicular in this area and then the truss will snap to it. I'll draw the first girder truss right here in the front that will snap between the two trusses. One more truss at the top and then I can draw these jack trusses right in this area right here and have it snap to that truss. Again, take advantage of the multiple copies so don't repeat that process too many times. We'll just slide a number of trusses in here. And then on the back side of the dormer, we'll draw one more truss that snaps right into there. And use the multiple copy again, and we'll copy that every 24 inches over this way. Trusses are intelligent in the program. If I maximize the 3D view, we zoom in into the bedroom area. We had a tray ceiling, and if you take a look, it might be easier if I turn on the wireframe view. You can actually see the tray is formed inside of that ceiling automatically, a typical way you might order them from the trust company. Any ceiling platforms and roof envelopes you have and you draw framing members, it will build around those objects and perhaps save you quite a bit of time. For the remaining trusses, I'm going to go ahead and place those and just fast forward the video. Now that all the trusses are in place, I need to fill in the pieces with the stick framing. The stick framing will actually go in and build your fascia, build out the blocking, Let's go ahead and open up the build menu and go into our framing options. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to choose to build the roof framing. Notice over the balcony the stick framing came in. It didn't come in over the dormer. Let's go into the 3D view and take a look. And again, you can see the stick framing has complemented all of the truss framing and it actually built the fascia on here. Let's go ahead and zoom in on the dormer area. I'm going to turn on the wireframe view so you can see this a little bit better. Let's come down to the wireframe line drawing. A lot of times what I'll do if I'm going to stick frame a dormer is I might stick frame the dormer, copy and paste those components back later, but it's really not too difficult to add the framing in for this. Let me go into the plan view and tile my screens. I've isolated the rafter near the dormer that it did frame. Let's go ahead and select that. I'm going to create a copy of that rafter and I'm just going to slide it over maybe eight inches or so. And then once that's in position, I'm going to go ahead and use the multiple copy. We'll slide those every 24 inches throughout the dormer area. Again, you can somewhat see that in 3D. Now I'm going to use the rafter tool and I'm going to create some blocking. So I'll just come in here, again, use the multiple copy tool. And I'm going to slide a series of those up the side for some ladder framing. And then I'll just do the same thing on the other side. And just use the multiple copy and then we'll pull that down for the ladder framing. Let me broaden the 3D view. Let's turn on a regular standard camera and take a look. Now all I have to do is repeat that process for the false dormer over here and that should wrap up our framing. In creating the construction drawings for the roof and the framing plan, I kind of created two different views. One with the roof trusses which you can see in the lower portion of the screen and then a roof plan in the upper left of your screen and have the stick framing on. When you double click on these items, this is linked directly back into the Grandview plan file. It will turn on the layer set that you've used, which has all of the things turned on and turned off that you want. You can then close this plan, go back, double click on the roof plan, and it will open up the plan directly to the layer set. Again, it's a different layer set up here that we're using. And it's turned off the trusses and again turned on the stick framing, the joists that we've turned on for the roof, over the balcony, and over the dormers. It's a very effective way to manage your plans through these different layer sets. And when you have the right layer set, all you have to do then is send it to the layout it will preserve that layer set and then back in that layout plan all of your drawings are preserved and I like to manage my plan set that way build a layer set send it out there and then manage it by double clicking on it it will open it up and you're right to that right point with the layers on and off that you want
Now all of the framing is complete. The trusses, the stick framing, the foundation floor framing, where the I-beams come in, and you're probably used to navigating and seeing things in 3D in Chief Architect. You can now export this and share it with your clients or your subcontractors. They can see it on their phone, on their iPad, on a website, and the way you do that is in the file menu, export, and you want to export it as a Chief Architect 3D viewer file. Now if you're not signed in, it'll prompt you to sign in to your Chief Architect Cloud account. Once you're signed in, give it a good name and go ahead and push it out. When the export is completed, you can simply go into your Chief Architect account and underneath that model, you can say Make Public. Once you've made it public, you can now share it or you can view it. Let's go ahead and press the Share button. You can take and copy this link and email it to somebody or you can get this share code and directly email it. If you want to learn a little bit more about the 3D viewers, from our website under the menu, you can go to the Chief Architect 3D Viewer. There's a download on the App Store. There's a download on Google Play. And if I scroll down a little bit, you can embed these on a website. Here's a model that we've embedded on the website. And again, you can show off your portfolio or information you want by being able to embed this in the website. There's other models down here. But there's information about how to use the 3D Viewer. Again, it's a 3D free viewer that will work on a phone, it will work on a tablet, and then you can also embed it and share it through the web. Once your clients have the model, again, they'll have the same navigation techniques. There's also a cross-section slider that you may be used to that you can slide your model in different ways and adjust it. They'll have the same tools that you're used to in Chief Architect. And that's called the 3D Viewer, and you should take advantage of it. It's a free service. You can upload up 100 plans to your cloud account. That wraps up the roof framing for the Grandview Build House for Homes project. We started out by simply using the automatic stick framing. We removed that, went back and did the truss framing, and then we did a combination framing where we left the portion of the trusses and we stick framed for the fascia, the dormers over the balcony. I showed you how I created my construction detail page, and then finally we took advantage of using the 3D viewer to export that model that can be viewed on phones, tablets, or web pages. Thanks for watching the video.